I am not a fan of that. That that's really not gonna work for me. Let's try something more along the lines of this. That sounds so much better. Like without even trying so hard. And boys and girls, just like I have preferences in music, many of you guys are going to have a preference in the tool that you choose to use from your multiplication toolbox to multiply larger numbers. Or even to multiply two-digit numbers by other two-digit two numbers. In the last video, we talked about partial products. And that's a tool that some people are really going to like because it's a box method. You were able to use it when we multiply three digit by one digit numbers and four digit by one digit numbers. But some of you guys are going to get a little lost in the sauce with some of the lines and boxes. So your parents may already have shown you the old school way that they used. We're not going to talk about that one in this video. We're going to talk about one more new school way. And it is so new school that this is actually going to be the first year that I actually teach it. Not to say that it's new and it hasn't been around for a while. But boys and girls, today we're going to talk about the lattice method. Some of you may be wondering, what on earth is a lattice? Well, it's a structure consisting of strips of wood or metal crossed and fastened together with square or diamond-shaped spaces left between. What? An interlaced structure or pattern resembling this. What is this? Let me show you this. You see the top part of this fence? That is a lattice. And a lot of you all have seen a lattice that way. Maybe you've seen a lattice with this not-so-tempting-looking apple pie with bacon strips on top. However, this apple pie will probably make you want to pull out a fork and a knife right now to get yourself a large slice. I know I do. So, in today's lesson, when we use the lattice method, it actually takes inspiration. Uh, it got its name because... It actually looks like a lattice, just like what we saw on the fence and what we saw on the apple pie. Now, I'm already going to tell you, when we get ready to set our problem up, from, uh, up for lattice method, it's going to look slightly different than what we did when we were doing the partial products. But do not confuse yourself. Remember, there's one way that we do the partial products method and there's going to be another way we do lattice. Now when we did partial products you remember we broke everything up into expanded form. For the lattice method I don't have to do that. Now here's a similarity. I'm going to write across the top of my boxes. Here's a difference. I'm going to write on the right side of my boxes when I get ready to write the second factor. So my 23, I took that number and I just put it towards the top. And then 34, I'm going to take this and I'm going to write it down the sides. So I will have 34. Okay, another similarity. When I get ready to do the steps for the lattice method, after I've set everything up, I would make my box, then I would do my diagonal lines like I have here going through each box and then I get ready to do the multiplication steps. Now I need to pay attention to each box. In this first box I have 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 would be 6. I am going to put a 0 here because this represents my tens and then I'm gonna put my 6 down here to represent my ones because I only have six. There's only ones in that number. Okay? When I go to the next box, I have three times three right here. Well, three times three is nine. I have no tens, so I can put a zero up here 
and then 3 times 3 is 9, so I put my 9 in the 1's place. In my next box, here I have 4 times 3. Now, I finally have a 10, a number for my 10's place, because 4 times 3 is 12. So, I would put my 1 from the 10's place in the top box, in the upper part of my box, and then the 2 in the bottom portion of my box. Okay, because that's two ones. And then finally, this last box, I am going to simply look at two times four. So two times four is eight, zero tens, eight ones. Now for the fun part. Now I'm going to start from right, and then I'll make my, work my way to the left, and I'm going to add up my diagonals. So look, in the first section, I just have two, so I bring my two down. In the next section, it's the part that I'm highlighting, I have nine, and I'm going to add to that one, so nine plus one is ten, and then I have this eight, so ten plus eight would be eighteen. I'm going to write the 8 down here, and then I will carry my 1. Okay, I brought my 1 to the next diagonal. Okay, that's where I carried it to. So now, I'm going to add everything up in that diagonal. So I have 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 6 is 7, plus 0 is still 7. So then I write my 7 down here. And then I have my final diagonal. And look, it's just a 0 in there. So I'm going to write 0. Now, I read my numbers from the diagonals from left to right. So now my number would be 0, 7, 8, 2. I can ignore that 0. My answer is 782. All right. I know this might be a little confusing. So I'm going to just take a step back and look at something real quick. When I'm doing the lattice method, I need to remember that when I'm recording my numbers in these boxes, I have that diagonal line. On top of the diagonal line is my tens. On the bottom is my ones, okay? So when I look at 2 times 4, my answer is 8. And look at how I, uh, how I record that. There are no tens and there are 8 ones. So I write a 0 at the top and an 8 in the bottom of the square where the 2 and the 4 meet. When I look at 2 times 7, my answer is 14. So therefore, my 1 is in the tens because I have one ten and then my four goes in the one section at the bottom. So that's just something to keep in mind when we're recording our answers. Okay, so let's look at another problem. Now we're going to multiply 43 times 67. Again, when I get ready to write my numbers, I'm writing across the top and across the right. So I don't have to write them in expanded form. 43, 67. So my first box, it's where 4 and 6 come together. 4 times 6 is 24. So my 2 is the tens place. My 4 goes in the ones place. The next box, I have 3 and 6 coming together. 3 times 6 would be 18. I simply write my 1 and my 8. In this box here, I have 4 and 7. So 4 times 7 is 28. I write my 2 and my 8. And then in my final box, I have the 3 times 7, which would be 21. Okay, for the next step, after I've found my little parts of a product, now I add my diagonals together. 1 plus nothing is 1. My next diagonal is right here. 8 plus 2 would be 10, plus another 8 would be 18. I write the 8 down here. I can't put the 1 also in here because I'm only putting one number in this section. So I carry my 1. So now I have 1 
plus 1. That 1 is not 11. That's 1 plus 1, which will be 2 when I get ready for my next section. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 4 would be 6, plus another 2 would be 8. So I write the 8 right there. And then for my last diagonal section, ooh, notice I got all the way over here, I have just 2. So when I read my number, I read it from left to right. So my answer would be 2,881. If I wanted to check for the reasonableness of my answer, I simply estimate my uh, product. 43 would round to 40, and I'd be multiplying that by 67 would round to 70. 40 times 70 would be 2,800. Ah, 2,800. And so that is very close to my actual product of 2,881. So my answer is, in fact, reasonable. Okay? Let's do another. I think once you get the hang of it, it's pretty much a fun little process because it's almost like a puzzle. So now I have my 35 times 14. I don't even have to write it in expanded form. I just write 35 across the top, 14 on the right side, and then in my, I can start with this box right here. I am multiplying 3 times 1. So that would be 3 and I'd have a 0 there. And then in my next box right here I'm multiplying 5 times 1. So 5 in my 1's, 0 in my 10's. In my next box right below I'm multiplying 5 times 4. Now I have 20. So I write a 2 in my 10s, 0 in my 1s, and finally, the last box I'm multiplying 3 times 4, which would be 12. I put 1 in my 10s and 2 in my 1s. And now I'm simply going to uh, look at my diagonals. My first diagonal is 0, because I just have 0 there. All right, my second diagonal, I am adding 5 plus 2, which is 7, plus 2 is 9. In my third diagonal, I am adding 0 plus 3, which is 3, plus 1, which would be 4. And then my last diagonal is 0. I'm not adding anything to it. Do not get confused with these numbers that you have on top of the box. That doesn't count. I'm not going to add the 5 to this or the 3 to my 0 here. Okay. Okay, so then I would just read my answer from left to right, and I have 490. Again, if I want to check for the reasonableness, I would round 35 to 40, and I'd multiply 40 by 14, which rounds to 10, which would be 400. And my answer is relatively close to that. You know, I'm just in the hundreds and not in the thousands. So I would say my answer is reasonable. All right, so now we have our last problem. I want to see if you can solve this one on your own. And then you can just check your answer to see if you got the same thing I got. So why don't you pause the video and work out the problem on your own right now. All right, I hope you had a chance to work it out. This is what my work looks like. And I know when I get ready to read my answer, I would read it from left to right. So I have a 1, a 6, an 8, and a 0. Put my comma. My answer would be 1,680. If I wanted to check the reasonableness of my answer, I can round 28 to 30, and I'd be multiplying 30 times 60, 
I didn't have to round 60 because it was already rounded to the nearest 10. So 3 times 6 would be 18 with two zeros at the end. 1,800 would be my estimate. And 1,680 isn't too far off from that. So my answer is reasonable. All right. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember that we are just talking about tools in your toolbox for multiplying two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. In the last video we talked about partial products and in this video we introduced the lattice method. Now you may prefer one over the other just like I prefer to end this video with some Christian grace. All right, I hope you enjoyed it, and until we meet again, take care.